Hey, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us from all over the world. Uh, my name is Yen. I'm here with Maurice Cote, our VP of Business Solutions. Hello. And uh, we also got David Savard or uh, David, uh, either way. And he's our team leader for the Devolution Server uh, Solution. And uh, I'm really excited about being back in here with all of you. Uh, I've already saw, I was looking in the chat right now, and we have people from all over the world. Uh, somebody's, uh, somebody said, happy St. Patrick's Day. So, <laughs> yeah. so top of the morning to y'all uh, <laughs> of all those. And, uh, but some of you, it's the afternoon. I saw somebody was from Bavaria. And uh, so thank you for joining us. And uh, we have European customers. We've got maybe some folks all the way out in, uh, in Asia and as well as a lot in North America, some from Montreal. Right. Yep. And some of our clients. Yeah. Home turf. Home turf for us. Right. And uh, wherever you are in the world, thank you so much for joining us. And we want to welcome you to this very special day uh, where we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about a bunch of stuff. Right. So we're going to talk about Devolution Server, our mainly our what we call our privilege access management solution. Yep. And uh, we'll be discussing how the focus on SMBs and IT professionals, a little bit about the reasoning why we we, we went that way. And uh, I also had David because David here is, uh, we, we have daily meetings that I, I attend as much as I can, but uh, we, they, with the team that actually is developing, the, the coders and, the, uh, and all the, the wonderful group of, uh, of folks that are working on this software solution that uh, you're using or you may or may not be using. So we just, uh, I wanted to have him here because he's just a wealth of knowledge because he works with the product that you use every day. And uh, we're open to suggestions. If you're any questions or comments, uh, difficulties or challenges, send them, uh, send them your way. We're going to have tech support people uh, that are working right now in that will be answering some technical questions and stuff. But if you have anything uh, that you want to ask me uh, or Maurice or David, any of the time, just let us know. And I'll, I'll try to monitor the chat as we're discussing here um, because we really want to have a, 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 a beneficial day. And this is for you. Okay. So thank you so much. And welcome to Devolutions today. And we're happy that you could join us in our studio. So let's let's start off with a little poll. We actually had a question that Maurice said he wanted to ask was um, if the uh, are you currently using uh, Devolution Server at all or not? Yeah, you're right. Because uh, the most basic feature of Devolution Server is most likely for a bunch of you uh, is AD integration, so Active Directory integration for our role-based access control. Uh, but we know we have 400,000 users of Remote Desktop Manager. Yep. Uh, we know how many uh, Devolution Server are out there, but we need to know out of you guys, uh, how many are actually using it at this time. Sure. So on in the little, uh, the, the right window pane on the right there, there will be a little um, a poll button. And Jenny just posted a poll well, about six minutes ago. So if you just answer yes or no, or thinking about it, uh, you let us know. Um, that and then she'll she'll let me know the information a little bit later on and uh, uh, so anyway uh, we we have all sorts of things uh, planned for today we even have a contest uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later for this really nice uh, comic book that we want to send to you but we're going to do a lot of uh, uh, we're going to show the product we're going to talk about uh, all sorts of different aspects of Devolution Server so we're going to get started so first of all let's let's start off with the uh, before we actually dive into the software solution. Uh, let's take a, talk a little bit about the the why. All right, so Maurice, you're really the resource for this. So why? What was the birth of the Devolution Server idea? Why did we go towards that? And just give us a little bit of the history of that. Well, it was truly organic. You know, uh, Remote Desktop Manager is uh, uh, widely used. It's the result of thousands upon thousands of feature requests. Really, over the time, over the time, over ten years. Wow. And uh, uh, we created back then Remote Desktop Manager Server, which was the first variant of the product uh, that uh, introduced AD integration. And uh, Remote Desktop Manager has been a password vault uh, from the get go because you can't connect to a device without handling credentials. So, just by uh, our expertise and the nature of our products, and the uh, the request of our customers, we when Pam became uh, uh, really big on the market, and everyone was asking, "Do you have a Pam? Do you have a Pam?" Well, uh, we had password vaulting 
we had uh, permissions, uh, we had so many features that uh, in order to make that switch, it wasn't really a big switch. Uh, we just needed to add a few features in order to become a full-fledged PAM. Uh, um, as most of you know, there are market leaders out there. Uh, there are analysts that are trying to define the market and de define what is the, the feature set of uh, what is a PAM. And we went after that, we analyzed it, and we went after the core features. And uh, as far as we understand, uh, as far as our community is involved, the feature request we have, we have attained that goal. Uh, well, in the coming weeks, we're releasing version 2021.1. In the coming days, uh, beta cycle. Uh, so we have... Uh, We've taken a stride forward, and in this year, with the password propagation, let's say password rotation, uh, we'll reach a feature set that we feel our customers need. Uh, not what the analysts are pushing for, because they're way out there with AI, with privilege elevation and delegation, with uh, really these feature sets that none of our customers are asking for. Mm -hmm. So we... Uh, we're taking a pause here. We're working on improving uh, what we have, meeting your, your needs. And what is nice to know for you guys is that we uh, practice dog fooding. So we use it ourselves. Mm. Uh, we have a DevOps team. We have a, a IT team. We have uh, marketing, sales. Uh, so, so many teams. Uh, we have a, a great number of vaults. We have a lot of content and we use it ourselves. And when the IT guy says, says you should improve this, we do. So it's uh, it's been working great for us. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, we'll get into a little bit more of the, you know, the needs of the SMBs and kind of our approach on PAM as well. But this is interesting because then you got involved in the project. Yes, and they I said did. Your team. So tell us a little bit about how, uh, what maybe what you were working on before and then how you transitioned to this. Um, before working with Maurice and uh, Devotion Server, I was working with uh, Hub, the Password Hub. Yeah. So maybe two years ago, there was a need for a new team lead. So I stepped in and uh, here I am today, two years later with uh, Maurice and with David. Yeah. And the project has evolved. Like, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, most is responsible for most of the eye candy uh, uh, because he has a great eye for, for that, as well as removing the reducing the number of steps you know creating a new folder when you select a destination we didn't used to do that in the past and he's gone everywhere and added these little uh, features that are great time savers all right so um and that's one thing i noticed too i love working that's why i love working with both of you because it's interesting we have uh you know, I'm the marketing guy. Okay. So I work, I do the videos. I try to make this, what we call the smoke and mirrors sometimes. But the, <laughs> so we try to make things presentable, but Maurice really has a lot of the, the, the business aspect and the, the brain of like why we're trying to do, but David's team is amazing because uh, they really are flexible. Cause I know a lot, they're all developers, Yeah. but, but David really does have a great eye for that. And I know even we, he was demoing some stuff for me yesterday and he said, you know, this, this little, the reason why we put the checkbox here is because it doesn't make sense for you to go back and click this button and come here. And he's like, so I decided, I said, why don't we just put a check? Because that's such more intuitive. And I know a lot of times um, we were talking about uh, sometimes designers or engineers don't create things for users, you know? Yeah, right. And if you're in the IT world, you know this, okay? Um, and, and, and sometimes with an engineer-driven world or a developer-driven world, sometimes there's things that just don't make sense. So I really like this product because... What we're trying to do is take your needs, like he said, most of it's all feature requests, right? Yep. And they come in and we said, we're trying to make something that fits you. Now, uh, Jenny just sent me the poll result, and uh, this is pretty interesting. She said that 28% of you are currently using uh, Devolution Server, and uh, so 46% are not. So, so that helps us to know a little bit where we're going to gear our conversations to. And 25% of you are... I think on the fence or no, you're thinking about what does this have to provide you as a, as a, a as a user. So I think it's going to be uh this will be fun. So thanks for responding to that, um, that poll. It's about a hundred of you in with us right now. So thank you guys for joining us. Um, all right. So let's continue talking about this. So um, as part of the introduction, I know you, you mentioned about the an analysts and um, 
Pam five years ago? Like what was Pam looking at? Right. And then talk to us a little bit about how, uh, the, what the issue is maybe also with, um, SMBs, like small business. And even maybe we could talk about MSPs as well, but, um, how, how there's an issue or there's a problem with, with the clientele that we're facing right now. Yes, they have limited needs. And uh, if you go after the uh, uh, the market leaders, they're so expensive. Uh, so that's, we don't want to say that we're inexpensive, but uh, we are. Uh, and, and that's, and with the good feature set, we feel, you know, that's, that's our focus. And because at heart, we're still a small business, you know, we, we still think uh, using the startup mentality, uh, but we've matured security wise uh, tremendously by going uh, undergoing SOC 2 ISO 27001 and all of these these uh, uh, patterns and practices that we've put in place uh, it uh, it it elevated our game really uh, a lot so we've been through that process of being small and becoming medium yeah. and we know we understand what the the our customers are experiencing uh, because three years ago we didn't have a CISO. Yeah, you know, it's true. Yeah, and so who was the CISO? Well, it ended up being me for some some things. I used to manage IT. Uh, so you you have a job description and you pick up a hat on the floor. You know, <laughs> exactly. it, it must yeah. be done. It's a startup mentality. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, but now we have a CISO. We have a legal. We have so. Uh, we've been there. We've walked the walk, and we we've gone through the bushes and got scratches and everything. <laughs> so right, no. we know. So we really understand our our customers, and they're the the smaller ones. Obviously, uh, we we don't have a really complex sales here. We have a sales team, but they're really more or a customer service oriented. Uh, we try to guide our customers, but. The evolution server still can be deployed and operational in a few days. Mm. Uh, it's as easy as that. So uh, obviously, with with David's input, the uh, the onboarding has been improved uh, uh, tremendously, and it it account discovery is easy. Uh, Active directory integration is easier. Uh, our next one we'll focus on is Office Office three sixty five because there are like. 28 manual steps and we want to automate that and or guide you better in that yeah. so yeah. it's all making it easily deployable uh, really uh, robust and affordable yeah so um one thing uh i know is i've been noticing the chat too there's some uh, i put this in the intro video at the beginning but i know sometimes with these online platforms there's some buffering or uh, some streaming issues I know some folks, for some reason, the screen is not popping up. And uh, uh, right now, I know I've got a feed. So if there's something, try refreshing your browser. I'm sorry if, it, if it's not coming up. But if only the audio is there. But don't worry, we are recording this. So at the end, uh, we will publish this um, maybe in the next day or two. And then uh, that way you'll get it. So I'm sorry if you can't see anything, if you could just hear what we're doing um, right now. Uh, so we're gonna, we're, I'll remind you of that. But if the, if the audio sync gets off, just refresh the browser. It's one of those things, right? Um, so as we're taking a look at this, um, here's something about privilege access management. I, at first one, and we started talking about it a couple years ago, uh, I, it was a new term to me. And a lot of times, I, even in the IT world, some folks are like, what is a privilege account? Or what, what is PAM? I mean, we talk about it, we hear about it. Gartner publishes reports, Coppinger Cole out in, in Europe does that. And we're kind of curious as to what is it? So give us the essentials of what, a, what kind of consists of PAM and so why remote desktop manager is kind of is key to this, but it requires this the other interface as well. Well, uh, so privilege access is driven by the activity that you do using a privileged account. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. So in the past, you were granted privileges, and then it turned out that some things you were doing were dangerous. So uh, at that time we were using shared accounts so domain admin and you would log in using that so we were strong in that 10 years ago because we were performing what we call account brokering yeah so we would be essentially the concierge that would open the door for you 
let you in. So therefore, you don't get the key. Uh, so that was our strength 10 years ago already. And uh, so, the, but nowadays, you know, the, the, the accountant, in some sense, is a privileged user because uh, if he gets hacked, uh, he can uh, mess up the books. Someone could mess up the books. And this is not only security concern, but the company image. Uh, and you may be under GDPR obligations to report these types of things. Yeah. So it's really uh, accounts for persons that are becoming privileged uh, just by the, the nature of their, their jobs. Our legal department is obviously uh, uh, his own plain user account, which nowadays we call least privileged account, is is sensitive. So, uh, so in a sense, it's really protecting all of your resources, uh, be it if you use, if you use shared accounts. Uh, nowadays, there is a popular uh, uh, method of using dual account privileges, okay. uh, the dual account principle, sorry. So you have your day-to-day account and you open your emails with that and so on, but it cannot have any privilege. If you uh, need to do your jobs, do your work on a domain, work on a switch, you use your privileged account. Uh, but uh, nowadays it's, uh, we've seen phishing attacks where they try to grab your, your token Mm. And we we've seen that ourselves. So it's uh, the, the bad guys are becoming smarter and smarter. So we need to protect these privileged accounts, be it for individuals or be it for services, for uh, in uh, application pools, for com components. So these accounts that are used on servers wherever they are, uh, need to be handled properly. And obviously, there's good password hygiene. Uh, the experts recommend changing certain passwords every uh, 90 days in Canada, uh, every 30 days in, uh, for some other jurisdictions. Mm. Uh, but uh, uh, we try to help with all of these uh, aspects. Okay. Um, so, uh, before I move on to, cause I know Dave's going to show some cool stuff, because uh, yeah, he is, yeah, I know he got, he got some tricks up his sleeve, but, um, so what's, what is the advantage though of, I mean, most of our, a lot of our users are probably using remote desktop manager as well. Um, but, um, why is it important that we have remote desktop manager behind this thing running it? Because, uh, you know, we, there's so many solutions out there, especially now with the things that, you know, Centrify and Tychotic Secret Server, CyberArk, they're doing things, but what, what's the okay. importance? Yeah, tell us a little bit about it. Well, uh, PAM is all about security and compliance. Uh, when you introduce a PAM without supporting tools, uh, your sysadmins will probably have a, a, a hard time accepting it just because it lowers their, their productivity really significantly. Mm. And we see that all the time. We work with all the top leaders you mentioned in the quadrant. We have uh, excellent to good integrations with them. Uh, we uh, it, it brings us a lot of business for remote desktop manager. And but we're not going after that market, that segment of the market, obviously, uh, because we intently focus on small to medium businesses. And uh, we're really happy with that. But it helps us in, in making a better integration and seeing in Remote Desktop Manager how to best give them back their productivity. Mm, so it can go as high, I, I feel, as it was before introducing a PAM. Okay. Because for most PAMs, you need to go through a, a, a PSM, Privileged Session Manager, manager to connect to sensitive endpoints. And... Uh, a lot of our customers cannot afford that module. Uh, and uh, for some other players in the market, they do have a basic feature. But our, since we have a lot of MSPs, you know, managed services provider, they don't have the luxury of, of imposing to their customers a lot of stuff. So we still need to work using different technologies, different VPNs, and, and remote desktop manager really has that thousand blades uh, uh, Swiss Army knife yeah. uh, can put the PAM to use because we will broker the account securely and uh, uh, we do have uh, 
devolutions gateway coming uh, that will act as, the, as that PSM. Yeah. Uh, but RDM in itself gives you back that productivity. Mm, absolutely. So now, just, this is actually an interesting question because I don't think I've ever asked you this. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. So tell us, how is the, um, uh, because you, your team is very familiar with remote desktop manager. And that's one thing with our, I think at Devolutions, which is nice. We all like the dog fooding aspect. All of our teams use all of our products. We yeah. hope at least, right? Um, yeah, yeah, we do. But, uh, but how is it for you to develop a solution that is, you know, it's mainly like a web based, right? And with the console yeah. as well for the installation, all that. But working with remote desktop manager with a different team to realize the goals of like the privileged access management. So how how is it? Um, how do you guys work in that framework to get remote desktop manager to make sure things are working well with Devolution Server as well? Yeah, we work with the uh, RDM team to make sure it's always compatible. So whatever they have new features, we just need to implement them, make sure it works. We also work with the uh, Maurice on the PAM side, make sure it also works and it's compatible and uh, it's seamless. Uh, yeah. The integration between uh, the website, the server, and uh, RDM. And also all of the our devolutions web yeah. launcher, uh, the web login, login yeah. Yeah. the launcher. Yeah. So we need to work yeah. closely because we're kind of the center of them all. Sure. So yeah, but it's great. Uh, you know, all the teams are really easy to work with. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But I, I think it's nice because it's a similar mindset because sometimes I'm I know this too. It's easy to get compartmentalized, right? And you're living in your own world. But yeah, they here's the thing is if they add a feature or if remote desktop manager adds a feature and they're not aware of it and it's a pam pam component. There's gonna be major problems, and I know there's some struggles yeah. that we had to. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, I mean, we were. I mean, we'll talk maybe talk about later. But even you were mentioning the private vault in uh, in in Devolution Server, trying to re refresh it for for performance and the, the logs and all that kind of stuff. We'll we'll show you that stuff later. But it was very unique challenges that were like, oh, how do we handle this? We never done this before, and then now we we come up with solutions yeah. to help you because there's some. We come whenever you guys are crying. We're here to answer the call, okay? Because we have some. We're, we're there for you. And our customer support team, by the way, is, their service desk team is amazing. They do a really good job um, how this works. So um, let's, uh, uh, as we're talking about this, I want to actually show um, show the, 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 the interface a little bit. Can we show the demo a little bit, uh, the Devolutions uh, server, at least show a little bit yep. where the vaults are and how things are. And just <clears throat> give, me, give me a quick little overview, all right? So you want to do that, David? Yes. yes All right, right, yeah. Perfect. And then we'll talk about specific features. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to switch over to David's screen right now, and he's going to go. And uh, so we're going to go live right now on this. So I hope you guys see this. I'm going to put us. I'm going to put us in the little bottom corner so you can see us. But uh, show us a little bit about this. So so explain to me what we're seeing and how it interacts. There you go. All right. Right now we're in the uh, privilege access section. Um, this is where you manage your privilege accounts. Okay. Um, you have your accounts here. Uh, and these are all these, so this is a little bit different than uh you know oops, something sorry. in your vault right yeah okay we're, we're not in your vault do you want to start with the well, vault we can be easier uh yeah talk about the vault too, so yeah, people can okay. see it and then we'll talk about the privilege accounts if maybe cool yes so to make it's a bit you know we're so versatile that you have the the connection family of entries that is that it is what you see in remote desktop manager so we've had port really to create that web interface that corresponded to that. So uh, that's when you see vaults, it, it is what RDM remote desktop manager is seeing. These are connections and with, there are accounts in there that can be privileged, but obviously if you were to think of using the PAM, you would have, you would have no credentials at all in your vaults. Mm, yeah. But, you can mix and match, and that's the great uh, the great thing about our products that they're really flexible. Uh, so right now we're we're seeing the the vault, right? Okay. Yeah. So, um, it's actually very similar to Remote Desktop Manager. In fact, I think it looks almost yeah yeah. Identical. But maybe we'll say cleaner in face because there's a lot less uh, options on the front interface. But basically, it's uh, the same interface as our RDM. You can create new entries. Okay. Uh, we support a bit less entries than. Uh, RDM, okay. but uh, we add new ones uh, every release. Okay, so great. you can create uh, our new password. Very and, easy. Uh, so yeah, so we have security, the interface, the logs. Um, yeah, we can add the uh, attachment documentation. So all the we can have different documentation. It's a uh, markdown. Great. 
Uh, yeah. And because in the past, we sold only Evolution Server paired with Remote Desktop Manager. Sure. But nowadays, we have CALS, Client Access Licenses, for, let's say, business users, and they can use this only with the Devolutions Web Login. So with the Devolutions Web Login, and sometimes they access their vaults, but that's it. They, they use it as a password vault. So um, we have, uh, so we, that's the vault view, which is pretty similar. And if you want to, if you want to have manage multiple vaults, you want to check, show us the vault selector above, because I know you did a lot of different uh, yeah. things up there. Yeah. Well, we changed that in the last version. So you can have favorite vaults. So if you are working uh, with a lot of vaults, we saw clients with like 900 ones. Wow. So you can select your favorites and they're always going to be available here. Okay. Uh, this, they're recently used also there. So. And one thing I've noticed too, I, and I, and I, as a user for me, I found that the performance has been getting better and better. You know, uh, and I know that's always a struggle. You know? Well, this was a side effect of wanting to improve the search sure. because most of our users, uh, they don't need to search. They don't use 200 volts. They may exist 200 volts, but they live day in, day out in their division, in their department, whatever, in their geographical region. So by adding these favorites, it, it changed how we do the search and it, it improved everything. Uh, the, the big difference between the, the web interface and the RDM, RDM gets everything in a chunk, you know, a huge chunk. Yeah. Whereas the web interface, David has introduced paging. Yeah. Uh, so now it's really performant. You load the first, I don't know, 25, 50, and then behind the scenes, we continue loading. So uh, uh, for he's put that in place for browsing the domain. Okay. Because in the past, we used to tell them uh, it needs to work fine with 2,000 users. And then we did a support call, and the user had 15,000 users <laughs> and 17,000 groups. Wow. So uh, that was eye-opening for us. And we jumped on it, and we improved it. So uh, that's... Uh, yeah, we try to improve every release, yeah. the performance. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, the client needs... All, it's always growing. Yeah. So, you know, a company that started with, you know, Five volts, three hundred en entries. Now I have five thousand entries. So as the client gets bigger, we need faster search, faster resolving, and yeah, also learn about uh, the domain and every, yeah, every yeah. day. So we yeah. get new solutions <laughs> it, because we're not IT technicians. So everything, every time we work in a domain AD, we need we learn new stuff. Sure. Um, there, there's a. I'm looking at the questions, by the way. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the in the chat because we'll answer them live. Um, uh, Terry said, "Is there a process uh, or progress allowing RDM to use browsers other than IE for online login from the RDM tool?" I couldn't say. Yeah, that's um, uh, we, Oliver. Uh, yeah, you should jump in the booth and the support booth. Yeah, and they'll involve Olivier. Our team leader for the web login, sure, uh, because he works on the RDM side of things for discovering these controls, these login controls. Yeah. So, uh, but I couldn't say. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, if you have any questions that we can't answer necessarily, we'll we'll uh, check the booths out because there's there's a bunch of um, experts in each of those teams, and they may be able to help that question out. So, uh, it's a good question, Terry. Though, um, uh, he said he's uh, Germano. Uh, said that uh, devolution server uh, may become the future RDM. <laughs> we, we, we never know. We never know. But it's uh, it's definitely a part of it, though. It's yeah, yeah, that's my session. secret goal. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was, uh, but we, hoping we for. change strategies. Uh, I yeah. talk too much. Uh, we change. We focused our strategy and the analogy. Uh, most Europeans will understand this uh, natively is really the Tour de France, you know, yeah. the team is there and they, you know, that it's going to be, uh, it used to be Lance that would win, you know, sure. the, all of the other cyclists yeah, yeah, yeah. are there to support him and to make him win. Sure. So remote desktop manager is our flagship and it, it, it really, it's our, uh, it makes the company live and, and then some. Uh, and all of these products that we've created over the years, the, the, the Devolution Server, the, the Password Hub, uh, Devolution's Online Drive, Devolution's Online Backup, they just added value to the platform as a whole. 
Sure. Uh, so, uh, and that realization that productivity was our biggest impact and making things easy. You know, you hire a new IT staff, he can work in the first morning because he doesn't need to know about uh, network routes and, and the password policies and so on. It's just handled and served on a, on a, uh, on a dish. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, um, RDM first and keep adding value. And since we work great with other PAM products and our devolution server was uh, a, a good uh, a candidate for that, we just added again features and features, but it's for the benefit of the whole platform. Sure. Um, there's somebody had a good question, and, and I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to I'm going to put you guys on the spot. <laughs> well, <laughs> Poor David. No, no, actually, he's he's running his production or no, no, it's not part of his his test environment right now. But can you somebody ask? Can you show the um, the search function and like the speed of it? I don't know if we can demo that necessarily, but um, I, I just have uh, that's a, that's a showcase environment for demos. Okay, sure. So you don't have thousands. Okay, of entries. Have thousands of entries. Okay, but uh, I mean, we'll we'll yeah. do one right now and see what happens. And uh, but. The idea is, oh, we got one entry right there. <laughs> it was super fast. A little yeah. bit. It turns out to be CyberArk. Oh, Funny. <laughs> a CyberArk uh, a credential. But but I, w- I will say this. Coming from, from the lips of David, though, we, we worked a lot on that, right? Yeah, yeah. And we're working, you know, and we're really ready for that. Um, okay. Definitely. So so thank you. That's actually, it was a great question, uh, uh, Maximilian. But I, I like I said, right now, this this environment, we set it up specifically so that and this is the latest release too that hasn't been out yet so um you'll so if you notice some things you're like hey i've never seen that button before uh this is he's going to show some of the new features okay so uh we looked at the the uh the vault what's in the dashboard just curious because people might say what's what is uh what's the dashboard for so um here we tell us a little bit about some of the things we decided to put there at first uh we have the number of checkouts the number of faults yeah you can see you can see the the current checkout uh, right now. I don't have any. Yeah, it so it's uh, quite empty. If somebody but, check uh, out a, a yeah. credential or a RDP session or anything, it'll yeah, pop up you, there. You'll see there. Yeah. Uh, you can also see the recently viewed here, so you can you know quickly navigate. Yeah. Uh, I guess I can. If I go see here uh, um, and, and start a one, it's gonna it's gonna appear in the recently viewed. Okay. Yeah. So I can just uh, maybe just save that. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Uh, if I go back in the dashboard, you know, okay, it's now we show see there. Yeah. 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 I'll go going to see also here. It's uh, the recent also there Very on cool. the dashboard. Sure. You can also do a quick search. Like, uh, you know, I did a uh, search. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good, even by letter. Okay. No, yeah. that's, that's very cool. But one thing is interesting we integrate with so many different tools that uh, we have to keep an open mind because it, we want everything to work with everything. So that's why this constant, like you'll see entries for every single application known to man. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we're constantly testing because we don't want to break your tools while we're updating our things, especially with our close relations with things like CyberArk. And, and we so- won't turn down any collaboration project yeah. ever. Yeah. And that's uh, adding value to the ecosystem is good for everybody we feel. Uh, we've had some bumps on the road, you know, when we came out with our PAM, but we, we resolved these and we, you know, by our focus on small to medium businesses with that twinge on SMSPs, yeah. uh, it, we perfect, perfectly, perfectly fine where we are and the big players are comfortable, I feel with where we're, we're going. Sure. Um, all right, so let, let's keep going. We we, okay, we talked about the, the search functionality. Now, uh, some, some of the asked, they said, do you, does it actually behave the same way with a thousand entries? Uh, I don't know, but I, I haven't tested it. So yeah, you would know. Yeah, he, he, when they tested it, they, they do test with large uh, inventory of stock. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so definitely it should, shouldn't do the same exact thing. Um, the, uh, so we talked about the, the, the search functionality, the dashboard vaults. Uh, tell us a little bit about the user vault. We used to be called the private vault, but... Uh, tell us a little bit about what, what's the reason for that. Uh, it's to store your personal credentials, your business password. Yeah. Right? As an, uh, yeah. For your, for your work. So, you know, your 
account uh, that are not your Facebook account, sure, but are really work related. What could be like the like the marketing Facebook accounts or the marketing, yeah. you know, things. Well, like no, that. no, it, not, it's for you not, to not use for the personal ones. Yeah, yeah it can yeah. be anything. Uh, Correct. Yes. Yeah. Normally, only yourself would see that. Yeah, but like b- business passwords that you would have to access, you know, credentials that have your name on it, kind of thing. Yeah, and. Um, now, but you were telling me the other day about we, we you did a big change on or um, to make it more, was it more performant? Actually, we changed the, in the uh, 21.1 version, the user vault okay. was completely redone. Okay. So now it's a first class citizen in a, it's a full vault. Okay. Uh, before you couldn't uh, do uh, documentation, attachment, log, history. Okay. Uh, there was none of that. So we, we work it all. So now it behaves uh, same thing as a regular vault. A regular so vault. yeah, if you could do it in a, you know, your uh, business vault, you can do it in a, your user vault. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah so now we ha- we add a lot of functionality to that as well, so people can have that for their own business passwords. So, um, all right, let's talk about some of the upgrade, the coming up uh, uh, features. Uh, so let's uh, then we have a kind of a list that we went through. So um, and if you hop in, if there's any questions that, or comments that you want to put on, or I know he's got some videos he wanted to demo as well. Yes. Um, so you want to talk about the uh, first one was Devolutions Gateway. So tell us a little bit about that. Is that something we can show, or is that something we just no? Mention? Okay. Yeah, no. But but we can uh, we added support for that. So if you're using Devolution Gateway now, you can manage them from here. Okay. Um, here. Uh, it's not installed right no, now. No, no, that's no, fine. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, you can uh, manage them from here. You're gonna have the RDB to make sure they are online. Okay. Cool. Um, when you create a new entry in the RDM, you can select the devolution gateway, and you get your list. Only for now, it's only SSH. Okay, only SSH. Uh, RDP, oh, oh, RDP, sorry, sorry, RDP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Um, as well. Um, now we also the. the PAM team folder policies? Yeah, we're going to... Uh, uh, so this is our privilege account. Like This is where yeah. all of our accounts are. And no, I noticed on the top, I didn't talk about this, but um, can you explain really quick the accounts providers and scan configurations a little bit, Maurice? About Well, your providers are the, at the root of it because they are the domains, the, uh, the any authentication provider. That's why it's called a provider. Yeah. So AD, uh, we, for now, we support Active Directory. Uh, uh, we support, as well, SSH boxes, so uh, Linux flavors of servers. And it was uh, eye-opening for us. We thought that uh, our customers would be using some type of federated identity provider for, for Linux boxes, and most of you don't. Mm. So that's why uh, each box can become a provider. And also we went after a uh, SQL server. So we can discover these accounts uh, uh, in these providers. So discovery is the right part, is do your scan configuration. So for AD, we've added uh, a, a root OU and you can discover. And uh, in fact, we could Show my screen, or sure, yeah. You want to? We want to switch over to yours. I'll do that right yeah, now. Yeah, okay, because I mean. uh, something new that uh, David just introduced. Okay, uh, that's my screen. Yeah. Uh, so I do have a scan configuration for uh, my domain, one for a SQL server, and one for uh, a Linux box. But what is new here? So uh, is the sorry is the number of uh, deltas okay. that was di- that were discovered in the last scan. So I have three new users and no modification and no deleted, but obviously uh, this is really, so now we cache the, re- the results of our last scan. And uh, if you, uh, if I wanna show you, that's where I was describing the base OU that w- we were starting from. Uh, obviously it can be, run uh, scheduled using a recurrence. Uh, you can start it immediately, but uh, it, this uses our scheduler, so I can't, it's not a good idea to show you interactively. Sure, sure. Uh, but my last run, I discovered three accounts. And if you don't want to ever control them, you just acknowledge. 
so they won't bother you anymore. They won't be triggered as discovered. But I want to take over this, this new HR administrator account, and I can simply import it and choose, uh, obviously, my, my, my folder and so on. And where this is where you see the PAM, really, the, the PAM uh, vaulting features, because I can reset the password immediately upon import and then also reset upon every check-in. Mm. So that's a, a great way of uh, handling uh, changes, really, between two scans. Okay. And that is new. Uh, so for those of you that are not current customers, in the past, you needed to decide by yourself what you were doing. But now, again, our goal is to make your lives easier. And this was the, the next logical step. So that's coming out in the 2021.1 release. Okay. Now, uh, somebody had a good question. Uh, they said, will there be support for OUD? I don't know what OUD is. <laughs> Sorry, but... OUD? Yeah. I know in uh, Azure AD, it's AUs. Okay. Administrative units. Okay. I don't know about OUDs. Yeah. If, um, uh, Ron, uh, can you, if you specify what OUD is... Uh, I'll be able to ask the question a little bit better. Um, Thomas asked, what about OOB connections? I'm going to have to spell these out because there's so, there's so many three-letter acronyms in PAM that, I, that some, I mean, I know you know what you're talking about. We may not know, especially if it's some other system. So we'll look into that as well. But um, uh, when also, okay, Thomas also said, what about like I, IDRAC, ILO uh, without AD, can I hook them into PAM as well? Well, that's the next step, and that's yeah. where you come in because providers. My dream would have to be to have thirty providers. Okay. Uh, the sky's the limit. It's uh, if it his if it has a, a script interface or a, a REST API, it's really easy. It just takes a little time, okay. and we 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 feed on feature requests. Yeah. So that's, you need to bring us, I, again, we're not IT specialists. We have a, a small team here, uh, but uh, you guys mostly see uh, that, that advanced stuff uh, for uh, for larger systems, you know, uh, we're going in Azure AD Office 365. So that's a good candidate uh, as well for being our next provider. Mm. Uh, for the uh, September release, let's say, but to keep your requests coming and uh, uh, like SQL Server, it's it's tiny and it's like ten ten lines of codes uh, of code, and it's uh, we added it just you know when you try to create a pattern, you don't create a pattern with only one. Yeah. So we just wanted v variety, and uh, those are the three that we went after initially, but. To, Keep their, their requests coming for sure. Yeah, if there's a you know a demand for it, you know, we'll do it. Absolutely, that's really good, and we're really open to that. And it's always yeah. a new project every week. It's like, all right, we just got a request for this, uh, guys. Let's work on it. You know, it's really it's really cool. Yeah, um, yeah. we're fueled by requests. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, that's what we do. It's what makes us tick. So yeah, <laughs> so, so we're fueled by coffee and requests. So <laughs> um, the uh, oh, Thomas he said O O B okay out of band like management interfaces. No. Well, well, that's that's not on a roadmap. Roadmap still. Okay. All right. So maybe in the future, Thomas. So, um, and um, okay, Ron said Oracle Unified Directory replacing the Oracle Internet Directory. That we was the... don't have a lot of customers that use Oracle. Okay. Uh, I know we have a in 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 RDM we have a data report tool, and we had a, a, a request recently. That the customer were using Oracle, but. Uh, I guess it's not the SMB market. Uh, mm. We don't have a, we don't support Oracle as a backend, and there, there's a reason. There's no demand for it for us. At sure, least. sure. Um, all right. So, that, that, so great questions. Thank you guys for those things. And also, Xavier just put the, in the in the chat. He said you can always post your feature requests on the forum, uh, and that's that really is like you said. That's our hobby. These guys monitor it. I mean, we've got our CEO, we've got every team leader, everybody's on there. Yes. We're constantly looking at it. And I mean, these guys are the specialists. Okay, I, I don't look at it that often, except for when I want to write a nice blog about something or Jenny wants to write a nice blog. We look at those feature requests. But um, these guys are, they're constantly, so they will answer your questions yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Every day. And uh, we answer every, every time, every topic. Yep. 
Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, and now he said, is AD, somebody says, is AD a requirement for this? No, no, we have custom authentication or devolution server authentication. So you can create group, uh, users, uh, user groups now, a new term from for yeah. roles. Yeah. And you can drive uh, our, our, our BAC using that for sure. Okay. Um, great. Let's, let's keep looking at some of the features because I know there was a lot of great stuff. Uh, what's coming out in the next release uh, was scheduled reports. Do you want to talk about a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, David, so I'm going to go and switch uh, to yours. Whoop, there you go. And uh, on the reports, <coughs> so we added a lot of uh, scheduled report. Before there was only one and it was the expired entries. Yeah. So on this release, we reworked all the report. Uh, so it made us uh, that. So we can choose all the reports you add in the, in the report section, the ones that make sense. Yeah. Some don't make sense in time. <laughs> uh, so you can select that. So you can have, uh, you know, every morning uh, your activity log in your inbox. Um, and these, these are reports when you say scheduled, so they come into your email? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, that's... yeah you're going to get that. Uh, it's a CSV file. Before the expired entry, it was uh, embedded in the body, but um, sometimes it does not make sense. And a lot of clients want to keep them, uh, create tables in Excel from it. So making it in the body of the email was not the wisest choice. So it's a CSV right now. Okay. Uh, so what we did, uh, yeah, we have the activity log. You can run it as an administrator. Uh, what it does, uh, it means that the report will run as an administrator. So you're going to see the entire activity log. If you don't, and uh, you choose, let's say, a bill, he's going to see it according to him. Um, so, so, so that's for MSPs. Yeah. You know, they have 50 customers, and the first day of the month, they need to send a report. And they've collated, and we have a, customers, uh, a customer that creates pivot tables and huge things with that and he has uh, those csv files and he runs them according to the owner of the vault the typically the customers so it's great a great great time saver really cool yeah and that, that was a big project too because originally like you said there was only one report, yeah there was right? only yeah. one yeah uh, so we had to rework uh, you know the entire way the the report works um we also had you know it's a quick one but you know, i really like it uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's his favorite report. Yeah, yeah, but you can click on me because yeah. most of the time when you schedule a report, you want it yeah. for it's yourself. For you. Yeah, no, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So instead of always having to choose yourself, uh, yeah. you can do that. So this is this is an example of David Saval's like genius of <laughs> I want this report. Yeah. So and no, but honestly, it just makes perfect sense. That's how you would use it, right? So no, that's great. Yeah, and, and uh, we're there. Kicking ourselves. Yeah. Why didn't we th think of that? <laughs> so, we yeah. also added the option, uh, do not send uh, when the report is empty. Um, so for us, it, it made a lot of sense. So if you schedule it for uh, you know every day, uh, that you don't uh, get it when it's empty, let's say on the weekend, you, you, you will not get the report every Saturday and Saturday if it's empty. Okay. But at the same time, I think it highlights that there's a problem. If you get uh, an email with a report on a Sunday, you mean that there was activity. So sure. for us, it, it made a lot of sense uh, to have that. The filters are the main, the same one uh, that you can do uh, on the report page. Okay. So you can do that. And last seven days, uh, you cannot have a custom date. So it would not make sense to send you every day the same day. Oh, okay, sure, sure. So it, it's last Saturday. Uh, it's always Saturday. relative. Yeah. yeah. Relative to the day yeah. that you're doing it. Okay. So yeah, we have... Uh, Expired entry link, login attempt, last login. So you can schedule that uh, to get every day, every seven days, uh, you know, ninety days. Definitely a lot of a lot of useful reports. Uh, Mark Rinkett asked, and I don't, I think you may have answered this, but he says, so there's not an option how you want to receive the report, like HTML table in a body or CSV to use in Excel or PDF report to store. It. No, it's not, only CSV. Okay, it's only CSV. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right now. Right now. <laughs> so put in a feature. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, we'll see. but okay, great. Um, now, uh, going back to actually John Kenny had a great question. He said on the subject of AD devolution server, uh, it does have an AAD for identity and SSO doesn't it sure. I say it had it last time tested it, but couldn't get it to run as required. Then. So 
is it now reliable identity option in Devolution Server? For AD? Yeah. Well, that's our bread and butter. Yeah, it said have AAD for identity and SSO oh. doesn't. Yeah. AAD, that's yeah. what we use ourselves. Okay. Yeah, so maybe, John, if the, I'm not yeah. sure if I, uh, I understand the question correctly, but if you send us and maybe we can help you with that because uh, there might be something that we maybe didn't explain or correctly, or maybe there's something that we're missing. So uh, let us know. And I'm sure someone yeah, of the technical That's part of our duck footing. We use AAD integration yeah. for our PAM, uh, uh, internal PAM. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, so let's keep going. What about, uh, let's look at some, some of the new features. Uh, uh, the user vault, okay, we talked about that. Yeah. What about no licenses and expired licenses? <laughs> so this is an interesting, this actually was unique. Well, in fact, it's a checkbox in most of the analysts' uh, uh, questionnaires out there is what happens when your license expires? And we were getting docked on that sure. because, you know, uh, one of our values is the, the wow factor. And we, uh, if your devolution server key was expired and you didn't want to renew, we would send you a 30-day trial to allow you to do your stuff. And that's what we did for the longest time. But now the analysts were docking us because we didn't have, did not have a mechanism. So we implemented a mechanism. Okay. Yeah, it's, I can show it on my screen. Yeah. Right now, if your license is expired, okay, that's it. So wait, yeah. So when yeah. you log in before it was Be, like before it was you could not no, no, you could not like in, yeah. uh, your license expired. Contact your administrator. Yeah. So right now you can still log in. Um, what you, you can do uh, it's in read only, so you're still gonna get uh, your vaults. Yeah. Uh, you can export it, and that's the main thing we. Uh, yeah, you want export you the file. Do. Yeah, we don't want to, uh, you know, the, the data asked it. Yeah, yeah. So you want to make sure. So that, you can uh, export yeah. and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, you can use, much it, for, use, it, it, use it whatever you want to do with the file after. So, but it, I like to because I noticed on the top right before it said admin because you were logged in as yeah. an admin. Now it says limited, so that's actually kind of visual cue to us to know. Um, and if you click here, you can still see that side. And yeah. if you get your license, you can enter your new license. And you can put it right there too. Yeah. In that pop. That's. So, because before you had to go into the console, the console. yeah, and yeah. I mean, who you know, if you don't have access to the console, it's on the service, whatever. Um, yeah, this is really that's that's helpful. So we try to help you out, but also to make sure that uh, it makes it so. Um, um, so anyway, so that's kind of cool. Somebody says we'll do. <laughs> they, they were interested in that. So um, and Mark put in the in the chat there. He says we can give trial licenses if you guys want to play around with it as well and uh, test yeah. the, test all these features out. And you can install it right now uh, without any license. Before our license was required. Yeah. So if you install it without a license, you can just log in with your first user and it's going to ask you, uh, do you want to make a trial? Yeah. Do you have a license? So Very you can cool. do it from there. You know, uh, our support team will help you deploy it as well. So we provide free sessions for that. Uh, it's a remote 45-minute session. If you have the server available. Yeah will help you deploy it. Uh, obviously, we, we intend to make the installation as easy as possible, yeah. uh, but we try to provide the white glove service. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a, that's a great, it's a team effort here. Uh, yeah. So, um, and, and the, the serious thing is we want to help you, we want to help you be some successful with the tool that we provided you with. So there's nothing worse than somebody's like, here's your product and then bye, you know? So I think it's really helpful. And especially with things that are so, important security and uh privilege accounts we we want to help you out as many way because your environment is going to be very unique from all everybody else, other environments so we'll we'll bend over backwards for you uh for that uh you said is there an easy um a setup to put in place when rdm is already running with a few people or licenses um like i'm, I'm thinking they're talking about devolution server is there an easy setup to put into place so if somebody's already using remote desktop manager uh, could, in the past you could just tell the server to use that database, pre-existing database, if it was SQL Server. But okay. nowadays, it's best to import, in, in uh, set up your vaults, uh, set up the role-based access control, okay. and import your data okay. using Remote Desktop Manager. Yeah, but it works pretty seamlessly. It's just, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. a simple import. Okay, very good. So that's that's easy. And we'll walk you through that too if there's a, as well. For sure, for <laughs> always, sure. Always, always, always. Um, then uh, let's see uh, what else I've got. Um, I'm looking at the features that you guys wrote. So um, 
you want to talk about, is there any other reports or that there's, do you want to talk about the console? I know you mentioned something really yeah, cool. I can, I can, uh, show something. Yeah. Show us the console here. I'll go to um, use the screen here. Whoop. There you go. All right. I won't show you the console. Okay. Don't show me the console, <laughs> but show me what you can do. <laughs> I have uh, we split the console in a CLI and the UI. So you see, I have three instances. Then I run a simple script using a pre-configured response file that may have been generated with the UI or manually. Okay. And now in the time that I took to describe it, my new instance is deployed. Wow, that's really cool. I go back in my console, I refresh, and you see a newly deployed console. And we support upgrades. It will support, a, we support uh, redeploying new encryption keys and so on and so on. So that's, a simple video, yeah, yeah. all in the dark. Yeah. Uh, but the amount of work that went in splitting the business intelligence into a command line interface and having that UI communicating and, 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 and so the CLI is controlling everything because it needs to run with elevated privileges. It, it manages your website. Mm. Uh, so uh, that's the start of something great. And we've, that's why we've removed a lot of um, admin features from the console and move them to the web portal. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, the, the future is virtualized environments, Docker maybe. So you may run your devolution server on a machine that you don't have access to using the console. So it can be scripted only. So uh, that's where why we went that way. That's really cool. It, it gives us a lot more flexibility to with different types of environments too. So... And yes. especially, like you said, with now everything web-based and it's going to be important that we, we can follow along with that. Yes. Um, this, this is a good question. So Heiko Baumgartner said, what about home use license? I love RDM and Devolution Server and we're using the product at my work, but I'd love to use it in my private environment too. Well, in September? Oh, September. We'll September. have Devolution Server free. Okay. I hope. That's cool. Yeah, yes. that's our plan. Yeah. Free. We're that's why, free. <laughs> that's why we yeah. worked on the license capabilities and installing without a license. It's the start of our devolution server free. Uh, I can't say for sure if it's going to be three users, five users, uh, 50 connections yeah. with or We're without on the details. Yeah. It's all that's yeah. all more on the business side of things. Yeah. Uh, but definitely you'll have a devolution server free. We do have a small business edition, edition that is Mark can confirm it's up to 15 users, I think. Okay. Uh, but even then, you know, we have that, uh, uh, we have the CLI, we have application uh, objects to log in rather than users. Uh, so it's a pretty full feature uh, already. Very cool. Um, there's, um, uh, before we go on to the roadmap and the features, any other features? That you want to show because I, I might be missing some things because I know you guys have things that you had. There's a couple more videos that you had, or is there anything you wanted to show or process? Well, it, it's how easy it is to onboard uh, um, to start deploying the PAM. Okay. Uh, where's the pause button? <laughs> All right, there you go. So, okay, so I'm going to switch to Maurice's screen here. Describe, tell us what's going on here. Well, again, this is just a video because uh, it, it involves uh, out-of-band, really, schedulers. So, okay, uh, sure. It's, uh, we're not tempt tempting fate. Yeah. So, uh, as you can see, I have no accounts, no providers, no scan discoveries. Uh, so, now I'm binding to a test domain. Okay. Obviously, LDAP or LDAP, LDAP S. Okay. Uh, uh, normally, you would use LDAP-S, but a lot of our customers uh, still use LDAP because they're in a secured environment. So a PAM management account and so on, and that's as easy as that. I've tested my account. So I'm binding. This is the OU browser that uh, David created. Nice. Uh, so I'm decided uh, deciding to bind on that one. Oh, it makes it so much easier than writing it up by hand. Yes, <laughs> yes. But yeah, in the past, you had to uh, copy. So that scan has run the first time. Okay. I s cut that on the video. It took uh, two, three minutes to run. Uh, before it ran, it took seconds to run, sorry. And then I'm, I'm uh, importing these accounts. And we saw earlier those uh, reset upon import and reset upon check-in. 
and so on. Uh, so again, that David touch of being able to create the folder when I need to use it rather than going a schnut. Yeah. I need to back, 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 create a folder. Yeah. So uh, now uh, I'm enforcing a checkout. Uh, I can uh, grant access using a role-based access control. Okay. So it's going pretty fast, but that's the goal of that video is that uh, maybe not a new user, uh, but with you, if you do the onboarding with our team, that's as fast as it will go to onboard and start from putting there. it in production. It's going to create the provider for you from yeah. there. You can uh, create your scan configuration also from there. Uh, and you can set it you know, to be uh, daily or uh, yeah. or not. So from that screen, you can do everything you need. That's cool. And uh, you're good to go. In the past, you had to create a provider, then yeah. the, f the folder, then the scan. And so that's the uh, version 2020.3 20, was the really the minimal viable feature set. Okay. And now we made it just so much better by helping you. Again, we were... Uh, we we're telling everyone that we gave you productivity, but it was still a pain to put in place. Now sure. we're taking away that pain, just making it better. Um, are there any other videos or features? Because before we nope. look at the roadmap, uh, I can show the uh, checkout policies on the PAM. I oh, guess, yeah. Uh, we just. Uh, okay, sure. So I'm going to switch over to you, yeah. Dave. Tell us a little bit about this so, feature. Uh, if you go on a team folder on a PAM, you have the uh, the checkouts. So, you know, different properties, if the approval is required or not, we can approve it. The reason if is it mandatory or not, the checkout time. Um, so you had to, you know, set it for every team folder. So right now we added policies. So you can, if you have policy here, uh, you can create uh, one. So let's say you just installed this version. You will have no policy. Everything uh, will be custom. So from there, uh, you can just you know create your own policy. And now uh, you have a policy. If you go here, you have your policy. And you can see uh, which team folder is using it. Um, what we also did, we have uh, like a mass assign. So you can send it, uh, you know, every day to Toto at once. Mm. Uh, you can create your new uh, team policies from there. Uh, it sees uh, this, all that. Uh, and if you, let's say you, you deleted one, uh, you can replace them with a new policy. So they just don't go, you know, we don't know. Uh, so you can set it as a default, set them as a uh, delete. I don't know if it's dog fooding or just common sense, but we realize that uh, even if you have 200 folders, most likely you want to have a unique policy so uh, that made a lot of sense. Yeah, so for us, so we have default as well. So when you set it as default and you create a new team folder, that's going to be the one that is set by default. Uh, and if you change the default, you know, uh, every team folder configured to use default will be changed as well. Uh, one other thing that we did in the previous version is the security. It's, it's slightly different than the... Uh, the one in the vault section, it's okay. a really role based. So instead of uh, having can view, can edit, can view password, it's a uh, like role based style. So you have the owner, the manager, the contributor. So you can set it like that. I think it's easier. Uh, you can see the role definition to see what it means. Okay. So you can see what I don't know, an operator can do. Uh, some can just do a account brokering, some can just read the logs, some can do everything. Uh, we also added, uh, like, if you have a custom and you select uh, this one, so you can set it custom, you set default, you mm. can have both. So you can have the system default and the and custom like one. Overriding it. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, because we you, didn't want to lose union. everything. You create a union of these. Yeah. That's really cool. And uh, you can also set a temporary access. So, you know, you go on vacation or have a consultant coming in. Yeah. Uh, you can set uh, that person, you know, Ellen, to have uh, access to that. Oh, app. that's nice. Yeah. yeah. So just, you know, you have one active uh, access. So that's one of the new uh, thing from uh, the previous version. Um, I think it works really nice. And uh, you have the default uh, 
And we've put now the pattern in place, but policies, uh, I'm encroaching on the roadmap. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> uh, but they're, they're going to be everywhere we can use them, you sure. know, uh, like for authentication, uh, some of our customers are asking us, well, from inside the network, I don't want to be prompted for 2FA. So we need to put a, a, in place a policy and you'll be able to define a bunch of policies. And it may be that even for using a specific account from inside the network uh, or, uh, or else, you'll have a, an additional MFA prompt, an OTP or something. So uh, that policy engine, now we've, uh, we've understood how to put that in place and how best to use it using that single point that David showed you. But we're going to put it in place for uh, authentication and we're exploding that mm -hmm. is administrator role that was uh, all encompassing. So we're, we're splitting that in finer grained roles and applying policies everywhere we can because it's a great time saver. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, make, and it just makes sense too, I think. because That's how you think, yeah. typically. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, two great uh, questions here. So Jean-Sébastien said, uh, when you cycle passwords, can you update it on a service that uses the account of a scheduled task that uses the account? That's what I call password propagation. That's okay. I'm working on that right now. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah okay. we're working on it. That's uh, been on our roadmap for a while, and yeah. I think we're there. Okay, yeah. Because we need, you know, the PAM doesn't have hosts, and now we need to introduce hosts. But we have hosts in your connections, uh, that vault area. So we need to bridge that gap in a smart way that makes it easy. And let's say on a Windows server, you may have IIS application pools, com plus component registrations, uh, service accounts. So uh, these are pretty easy to, to change remotely, uh, depending on what technology you use. Uh, but it's really, it's our focus. But we'll start with AD, obviously, because uh, we use that day in, day out. SQL Server is a no-brainer. It's really simple. SSH, it, uh, we try to support as many uh, distros, uh, uh, distributions yeah. as possible. Uh, but uh, we came up with a great way of have handling that. So password propagation is coming out in September. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> That's no pressure. Yeah. Exactly. That's our next release. Um, uh, another question. Evangelos said, sorry for repeating myself. Sorry, I missed your question earlier. But is it possible to scan a range of IP addresses to discover local admin accounts? That's that's going to be in our discovery uh, in the future. Okay. I can't say if it's September. Uh, it depends on the, uh, the the number of requests that we have. Okay. Great. And a great segue, talk about the future, <laughs> talking about the roadmap. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So tell us a little bit about the some of the things that we're uh, planning. And, uh, and if you have any more questions, feel free to ask us. But... Um, so let's talk about the roadmap. I know you, you put the RDM PAM consoles first. So... Yes, that's that comes from working with so many PAM partners. Uh, now you have certain features that will never be in a connection manager. Uh, even ourselves, our checkout, we have a nice window for entering the information for the checkout, as we do with uh, with uh, Beyond Trust and Secret Server, I believe. We we ask for the reason, maybe a ticket number. And we send that to the PAM behind the scenes. Uh, but uh, in some cases, it's nice to have a view of your PAM. Uh, so it may be your CyberArk safe. It may be your devolution server uh, uh, PAM section. So we want to uh, improve that. Um, that's seeing the content of your 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 vaults and helping that check in process, that check out process, really eliminating every every hurdle on your on your on your race. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. No, that's really cool. Um, now the next one, this one is just the word that you use a lot often, but REST API. REST so, API. Tell us a little bit about REST that. API. <laughs> I get the question three times a week. Yeah, and you know. David is really, really busy. Uh, I don't remember how much of your time is spent just keeping 
the server compatible with RDM versus the new features, but mm -hmm. we had no capacity for for uh, a dev to work on the REST API. Uh, uh, if you, maybe some of you are aware, we had a Python SDK in the past, but well, we still have it, but it uh, it we did that based upon user requests and the adoption was really, really low. So now with, uh, uh, it's a question that most of our customers have, do you have a REST API? Well, with, yes, we do, because we can tell you how to call the devolution server because all of the endpoints are used by yeah, our own that. application and by remote desktop manager. Our trick is to document it and package it into a module. And that's, I had a, 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 we have a new resource that came in this week, and that's going to be his main goal, uh, working on that, uh, because it's just not a lack of will, it's a lack of, of, uh, of bandwidth, really. So it's to be a focus. And, you know, we talk about um, a mobile app or devolution server. We have a great team in house that, that created a, uh, an app for the password hub and we have remote desktop manager for mobile but it's it's limited it's really huge and uh, it, it it's monolithic uh, so it, we have limitations on remote desktop manager so we are trying to start uh, with that team to create devolution server mobile app and again, password. When you do have that checkout uh, request, you can you will be able to authorize it right from there, and uh, and maybe check out an account, view a privileged account if you have the permissions, obviously. So it's um, everything, uh, everything that we integrate with Devolution Server help, helps us putting time in in uh, in supporting a better experience paging filtering yeah. and so on so, so all of these new endpoints uh, are perfect for use using a rest api but again that's an employee now we have a resource that will dedicate his time to that that's really good, <laughs> be good. yeah yeah but, but that that's why uh, we started to uh, rework the report uh, so we can do that uh, mm. so you know filtering paging uh, we did that for the vault uh, right now, the endpoints. So we created new, uh, like, version three endpoints. Uh, it, it takes a while, but we're getting there. Uh, so I don't know when we change feature or when we do something, uh, we take the time to do it a bit better. Improve it, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's it. like camping. Sure. Le leave leave it cleaner than when you got there. That, absolutely, no, that's true. Yeah. That's great. Now, this is perfect because I was just going to say the word password propagation. And you know, you talked about a little bit, but uh, Brett had a question. He said, hopefully that password propagation, sorry, my mic was down there. I said, hopefully that password propagation will encompass the user accounts that Devolution Server uses itself, SQL, IAS, et cetera. That's uh, interesting because we're, we talk too much, me and David, because we, I ask him, do you have 15 minutes? And then we end up talking two hours. <laughs> and uh, we're, we were, thinking about creating a system vault and storing these accounts in there. Mm. And therefore it would have all of the benefits of our, of our password vaults, vaulting, uh, our password rotation, or uh, what do we call our heartbeat? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's really, uh, it's not on the roadmap, but it's the type of stuff that David could do in a weekend, I think. Yeah, <laughs> September. No, no, <laughs> no, everybody's coming. September is going to be huge. Because uh, uh, yeah. Erica, poor Erica, gets stuck with a lot of support cases where, yeah, is she connects in five minutes. It was that account had lost some uh, permissions or that account password had expired. Mm. Uh David is keeping a tight rein on, on his staff and, and he tells them if you need to be in debug mode to identify an issue, you've failed. Mm. You need It needs to be in the log. It needs to be in a report. It needs to be clear. Uh, sure, and the yeah. support staff can't be uh, wasting time. Therefore, your system being down, your system being down for hours because of something that takes minutes to, to resolve. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. So excellent question. And it was a perfect segue with yeah, that, with that yeah. topic. So um, what else? We got some future ideas. What, oh, check out approvals using our Devolutions Authenticator because we do have an app 
yeah. an authenticator app, which is which we use. I know a lot of people already use different applications, Google or uh, or Microsoft. Um, but uh, so tell us a little bit about how that would work, maybe. Or simple. Well, uh, obviously, it needs to be tied in with uh, with uh, Devolution Server as a, an identity provider, uh, because the 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 ideal scenario would be to support OAuth uh, scenarios out of the box. And uh, therefore, we would support like five or six providers in, in one go, uh, different identity providers. Uh, Okta is a market leader. Uh, they they just purchased uh, Auth0, I think. Mm. So uh, yeah, that would be the dream. Uh, but when we have that uh, in, in, uh, in the uh, account app, it would make sense to just push an identification to your authenticator. So for if you have your Devolution Server mobile app, you could have it there, or you could have it in the your Devolution's authenticator. Yeah, very good. So a checkout request comes in, boop, you just pop it in, and you can approve or deny yes. and comment or limit. It's pretty good. It's good. The checkout process is quite yes. interesting for that. Uh, even in the future, it could be the customer that approves your access to their DC. Oh, but wow, the customer yeah. is not a cust is not a user in Devolution Server, so we could create a system like that that you get approval from anyone and anywhere. Yeah, interesting. Yes, very very cool, very cool. Um, uh, next one I have on the list here was Devolution's approval service. Well, that's yeah. Uh, that, is, is that, okay, so, sorry, so, okay, so, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I work for Mark. But that's that's <laughs> not but, our team creating that. No, it's no, a I new see. side project that yeah. uh, David, the CEO, created. Yeah, uh, I can't say any any we dates on that we, part. No information has been provided. In fact, our security team is going to be heavily involved in that. Absolutely, yeah. That's good, and that's one thing too. I, and I we mentioned a little bit. You mentioned about the CISO, but. Our, our, we have teams that are co collaborative because we, you know, when you have marketing and developers and see, we try to work together because obviously you want the interface to look nice, so it's easy to use. So we got a whole design team that's working closely with them. But then you have coders who want to make their job make the thing work right in all the environments. And then also we have a security team that says, "Hey, make sure that we're compliant," because and especially with Europe and North America now, we got also different different things and i know yeah. that's why you're constantly wrapping your head like how can we do this and still remain compliant yeah. but yet easy to use and, oh. that's the thing you know years ago you had the red team and the blue team in security yeah and it, it felt like he uh, ivory tower you know you have a, a security concern there and then they would leave mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the the industry matured and now they work hand in hand uh, okay how could you prevent that from happening and uh, david the ceo uh, when we started this, uh, I or the CISO, uh, the CISO has devs under him, and they're uh, they're responsible for uh, educating the rest of the staff on 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 secure coding, but not telling you that that's not secure. They need to provide recipes and guide the rest and educate the rest. So it's really uh, uh, a full frontal assault on 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 security here. Sure. Yeah. Um, um, maybe I can just show something because yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, you know, in November we work with the uh, security team. Yeah, and uh, we came up with the security dashboard. Oh yeah, yeah. So tell, tell us a little bit about that because that's new. And yeah, it's uh, in the previous version. Um, in the current version, we added new security check. Okay. So you know that's a good way to see uh, how much we think your application is. Secure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see, uh, you know, if it's a uh, SMTP, HTTPS. Uh, if you click on it, you can also see the details. Okay. So, uh, those of you that have uh, Microsoft Office 65 will probably recognize it. It inspired, it inspired us greatly. Mm -hmm. And you, the focus is not to have 100%. Definitely not. No. no. <laughs> it's just to tell you that there's some low hanging fruits, there's some relative importance. Uh, you know, because there's a rating in there for the number of admins, you should have a really low number. We're yeah, we don't impose anything. Sure. We're, need, we're here to guide you, so it, that, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. If you feel that having five admins is fine for you, it's fine with us as well. Uh, we try to code using uh, and and we understand AD. Let's say using the Microsoft best practices, but uh, a lot of customers don't follow these best practices. 
just because they've been doing this for the longest time, they're using their uh, good old patterns. And we try to navigate that and work with anybody and any practice, let's say. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's actually, that's a really good feature. Good. Thanks for showing us that, uh, uh, David. Um, now, we're going to have, uh, we have a few minutes yeah. left here. But if there's any questions that you guys want to, uh, to ask, uh, you're more than welcome to. But um, before we do that, I want to make sure, I don't know if you uh, went over to, we have uh, in the expo booth, we actually have a drawing section. So if you want to head over there, you could always open up a new tab. But uh, we're, we're giving away this beautiful Sysad Minotaur comic strip book here. I know it's kind of far away to see, but um, the idea is uh, it's, it's got like the best uh, comics uh, that we've done in volume one. And uh, we want to give away uh, about, I think, three copies of this. So if you go ahead and put your name into the, go to the booth and just click register, I'll get an email and then I'll randomly draw them in about five minutes or so. But uh, if you have any questions right now, um, uh, let us know and put them in the chat or ask. I know Mark is answering questions. If not, uh, in the sessions right now, we have a couple, uh, like some booths there that if you have any specific technical questions, sales questions, or uh, we have all of our the best team in there um, doing that. But if you have any questions right now, go ahead and post them. Uh, Mark just said, by the way, we just received our ISO 27001 2013 certification. So he just posted a link to that. Um, he also put a link to our um, authenticator uh, app as well, because if some people want to download it, it's in the app stores, but he put a link to that page as well. Um, now he said, how do you get, how do, Christian said, how do I get the book? Just, we'll, we'll randomly draw three people out of the list. So go to the, on the left, there's a little expo tab, uh, click on that. And then there's a little, um, a drawing a contest button. You go in there, click, just put, uh, I, I don't know if it says join or subscribe or whatever. And then I'll get a notification for that. And we'll see a lucky winner might get it. Uh, and it'll probably be, I don't know if we're ever going to make it available, but, uh, we'll see what we can do. But, uh, anyway. Yeah. The Maybe they don't know about the force. Yeah. Oh, the devolutions force. So that's a great uh, a point as well. So we have a group of, um, uh, uh, it's, it's managed by Derek and Derek's one of our marketing guys. And what it's a place where a community of you can go together, you get points and things like that for uh, looking at our products and at asking feature requests and doing these little, uh, these challenges. But it's a really good community of, uh, of users to uh, devolution server, all, all our products to really get, uh, early releases sometimes we give out betas and things like that so you guys can test it out but that's a great place where you can go then you can get points for doing these little challenges so it's like devolutions books you know <laughs> and then you can spend them on the store to get you know hats and uh, and i mean I, one of these will be available i think you'll need a lot of points for this because it's a nice it's a nice thick book um but uh you can get you redeem points amazon gift cards a lot of you guys are, are got, got some nice stuff uh, I mean, I know at one point I think we had a VR thing. Uh, I think we, I don't know. I think we've had a little bit of everything on there, but anyway, so you may want to check out the devolutions force as well. And there is a little booth in the expo on that. Uh, so if you want any, any other questions, I'm going to take a look. Um, anything else you wanted to, you guys wanted to show before we. I think I'm good. Uh... Yeah. So, so that's our idea of what a PAM for SMB should be. Yeah. And just, Tell us where to go from here. Absolutely. And we're all about uh, those requests. So, all right, I'm going to wait one more minute here. I've got uh, a bunch of emails in my box here. I think 73 emails. So I got some, I'm going to pick a randomly scroll through my Outlook mailbox here without blindly look. Uh, but yeah, no, thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. We, we have, we've been trying to do these webinars because especially with everything going on right now, this is the absolute best way that we can communicate with you. And we're trying to do our best right now. Like I said, this is the new studio. You know, the mics, uh, sometimes we have issues with volume and all this stuff. But that's, you know, it's part of life. But we're doing our best to kind of collaborate. And uh, so you guys can get a little taste of our uh, solutions. And uh, we have another webinar coming up. And we'll send you all an email. And that one's going to be on Devolutions Password Hub. And that is our, um, our online, cl our cloud-based, team-based password manager. And uh, we, we collaborate, by the way, we use all sorts of tools. So when we're talking about things, we integrate all of them. So sometimes we'll see us using all sorts of different tools with ours because we're testing things and seeing how things work and don't work. Um, but we created a cloud-based password manager to make it a little bit easier for teams. But it's nice because it integrates really well with Remote Desktop Manager. So it's not as 
robust software privilege accounts. It's just for cloud-based password management, but you can do roles and stuff. Some of our users use yeah. that for their privileged accounts Actually, yeah, because you... it's a SOC 2 environment. Absolutely, yeah. It's really highly monitored and, and uh, we follow all the best practices for there. Uh, but it really, it's, it's a cloud-based, so it's good for teams that don't need to worry about on-premises and, and password discovery, account discovery, password rotation. So it's if you need a simple vault, uh, password hub, you really should look into that. Okay, definitely. So that's going to be uh, April 14th, and we're going to do the same thing. We'll be in here. I'll be with the uh, uh, some devs, and uh, we'll be going over that uh, that topic. Um, now, here's a couple uh, uh, Q&A that just came in right now. So Douglas said, hi, is the launcher, Devolutions Launcher, going to be supported in the future? We've integrated it in our workflow, but the Linux version disappeared. Are there plans to bring it back? Keep asking for it. Keep asking you know, for the, it. the Windows uh, edition is uh, alive and kicking. Uh, uh, and it's it, it's great, really. Uh, uh, but we found that most of our IT customers wanted the full-fledged RDM experience. But then on the other end, we get complaints that RDM is too complex, too heavy. So, uh, yeah, keep asking for it. Uh, it may just become a reality. Yep. Your dreams might come true. So, <laughs> but, but yeah, no, but this is a, it's a good point. Uh, what about inter- integration with SCAMA? Scam a smart card authentication mechanism assurance. That's, isn't that more on the RDM side? That's for establishing uh, remote connections, right? Okay. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because we <laughs> have, be, we just yeah. added smart card authentication for SSH okay. sessions not too long ago. Okay. Uh, um, he also, Christian also said, or do you guys use Kerberos uh, authentication for the auth for um, Devolution Server? No, we don't. Okay. We have a Windows uh, authentication layer Okay, uh, that is not Kerberos. Um, let's see here. Uh, David Delvio said, I will be more transparent. He said, <laughs> he said, I don't think the launcher for Linux will come back. Okay, that's the same thing for macOS. <laughs> no, but th- thanks, Dave, for clearing that. Because So um, uh, what about this? He said, uh, or any improvements to recording server to support Telnet sessions, also supporting a uh, record of launcher sessions? But It should be handled by the Devolutions Gateway. Okay. Uh, so obviously the Gateway, the first iteration is RDP. SSH is behind. Uh, but our SSH flavor is a port of Putty, okay. so it supports uh, Telnet, SSH, FTP, SFTP, all of these things that Putty supports, we support, but in a multi-platform manner. Uh, so uh, I, I can't say for sure when it's coming out, that SSH uh, uh, support for the gateway. Okay. Very good. And uh, hey, just want to let you know, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. I Second time we do this, we've had a great time and it's a lot of fun. But we, like I said, we really wanted to put these things on for you. And uh, and I love chatting with Maurice and Dave anyway. So um, we'll have more sessions with different experts uh, in their field. And if you have anything specific that you want to hear us talk about, uh, we're going to talk about our, our solutions. But if you ever want to chat and say, hey, uh, we want to talk more about privilege access or things like that, we are more than happy to to come up with these uh, types of webinars. And, and we're working on doing some French ones as well, because we do have some uh, some French uh, uh, clientele as well, especially since we're Quebecois here and uh, we speak French. But um, And, and we, we also talked about maybe doing a, uh, a later one for all of you folks in Europe. Well, earlier for oh, us. Sorry. But, uh... Early for us. So we'll wake up early in the morning just for you because I know we have people from all over the world. And uh, if you miss our remote desktop manager webinar, it's on our YouTube channel as well. If you just search up Devolutions and you look up uh, uh, remote desktop manager uh, webinar, we have that as well. Thank you so much. We really appreciate the time that you've come uh, today. Have a wonderful day. 